Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just Said I Am Playing Final Fantasy XIV. Last episode we, um, we finished off the Allied Beast Tribe quest. Meaning that at this point, outside of Savage content, which would be the Savage um, Coils of Bahamut, we have done everything that a Realm Reborn has to offer. Um, we also even finished uh, Palace of the Dead, which is technically Heaven's Word content. But whatever. It was available now anyway. So, with that, we are going to go and continue with the main story now. We will go on ahead, Lin. We will go on ahead, Lin. Pray join us once matters at the quicksand are resolved. Give my regards to Momodi and let her know that I will call upon her anon. Right. It's still stupid that the East Rider is over here. It makes no fucking sense. But oh well. I'm not a game designer. <laughs> I don't get to judge. <clears throat> I appreciate you dropping by and uh, dropping in on such a short notice, Lynn. I know you've got places to be, so I won't waste your time. You're friends with a crystal brave by the name of Alianne, aren't you? Former adventurer? Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure you recruited her yourself. Well, anyway, she came around for a meal not long ago, and before she left, she asked me to give you a message. Said if the others, uh, others ended up dragging you to the feast, I was to see, you, uh, to, to see you got it before you made your grand entrance. Meet me at the station west of the coffin, a uh, coffer and coffin. There's something I must show you. A short message, I grant you. But she thought long and hard before picking those words. Barely touched her food, too. Under other circumstances, I'd have thought those signs for of a troubling heart, but something tells me she ain't planning to ask her thoughts uh, on a gentleman uh, on a gentleman caller. <laughs> yes, those are my thinking noises. Right, this way. This way, yeah. Waiting, 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 waiting. Hey, there is a bot. There's a bottle on the floor over here. As you stand upon the platform, your thoughts begin to wander, and all too soon, the ghosts of comrades lost and enemies slain begin to file by your mind's eye in solemn pro uh, procession. Clearing your head, you scan the horizon, but see no sign of Alian. Straining your ears to listen, you hear the chatter of Kikir and the buzzing of serpents, but no approaching footfalls. Sighing, you bow your head, only to notice the vial lying at your feet. Lynn, is that you? What brings you out this way? Lieutenant Alianne. Why, no, I haven't seen her about. Had she come this way, I guarantee we would have crossed paths. I must have passed this spot a dozen times. We're to patrol the city's environs on account of the royal banquet. Captain's orders, you understand? Speaking of which, isn't it about to begin? You should be with the... You should be with the other honored guests enjoying a well-deserved respite. Now, I pray return to Ulda, then. If I chance to meet the lieutenant, I will tell her you were here. Me and the boys at 3 a.m. being sus. Oh, Sultan Tree, hallowed spirit of my line. Through my weakness, the glorious house of Ul has all but disappeared beneath the sands. 
No. <laughs> Forgive me. But Sorry. I know not what else to do. But I'm gonna let it like auto go f from this point on because clicking is annoying. And I did indeed accidentally skip a line of text. And that, my friends, is why I will just let it auto play. <laughs> because I am not in the mood. Well, it's just like clicking and all just you can also hear it in the background, I've noticed. So I would like to remove that um, little thing. Hand it over. That thing you have. Your dark soul. I reckon you head straight to the feast after meeting with Alian. What's the matter, no appetite? This tiny glass container appears to have been used before, but to contain what, pray tell? So, she wasn't there, but this was, eh? Let's see. Hmm, looks to me like an alchemist file. But beyond that, I can't say. Might be best if you hold on to it for safekeeping, though. And wrote, no use worrying about Alian, I'm sure she'll turn up before too long. And when she does, we'll soon find out what the, uh, what this was all in aid of. <laughs> Besides, you've got more important things to think about. Would you believe that while you were away, another messenger arrived for you? Well, one did. One delivered by the Sultan Sultana's handmaiden, no less. Seems her grace desires a private audience. Our, handmaidens, uh, our handmaiden will meet you on the royal promenade and escort you to the Sultana's chambers. <laughs> So, what are you waiting for? Come on then, go! Okay, cutscene. You needn't trouble yourself, so. Your grace is most kind, but it is no trouble to me, rather an honor. If your grace is ready, I shall summon the warrior of light. I am. More guessing, suck okay. <laughs> it. He's blue, Dabu. Everyone looks to be in high spirits. With good cause. A common victory may serve to unite even the most unlikely of allies. You've brought us one step closer to a united Eorzea. Your modesty knows no bounds, Antecedent. Were it not for your efforts, Sir Emmerich would never have become such a steadfast ally. When he convinces his countrymen to rejoin the Alliance, we shall all reap the benefits, military and economic. I tell you, we are on the cusp of a new era of unity and prosperity. Territorial disputes are all that divide us now. But I have faith that we will find an amicable solution in time. And failing that, I'll have my trusty warrior of light box the ears of all concerned. Speaking of whom... She will be joining us shortly. A matter at the quicksand required her attention, but it did not sound serious. Jeez. <laughs> Suddenly hitting me with that gameplay. I was like, wondering, like, oh, wasn't this like supposed to be later? It's been such a long time since I've did this, since I've done this, so I do not really remember the the things that happened in which order.
Thank you for coming, madam. Her grace is most eager to speak with you. If you require a moment to compose yourself before your audience, you may have it. Or, if you are ready, it would be my honor to escort you to her grace's chambers forthwith. Upon proceeding to the Sultana's bedchamber, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. I would like to say that this point right here is... If there's still anything you want to finish off in... Like, if you don't want to come back to a Realm Reborn, yeah? And just want to finish off a Realm Reborn and move to Heavensward and not have to come back anymore for anything else? Um, then do it now. <laughs> because this is basically the end of a Realm Reborn. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. So anyway, let's move on then. Enter. Your grace, your guest has arrived. Pray come in and take your ease. Is well that the steps of faith held against the horde. And what of the city proper? We sustained some few losses, but the heart of our nation yet beats with vigor. I am not certain I could say the same had we not received your most generous aid. An attack on Ishgard is an attack on the realm. We stand together or fall divided. Such noble words, after the fact. I had hoped to speak in the presence of her grace, but it seems she has been delayed. That being the case, now would seem as good a time as any. Honored friends, Pray allow me to convey Ishgard's warmest gratitude for your part in the defense of our lands. Tis upon the success of this very alliance that my recommendation to throw open the gates of judgment shall be founded. With the blessing of the Archbishop, it is my hope that Ishgard will soon be reunited with her long estranged sister nations, and that Eorzea shall once more be as one. Very well. Is Artemis? Nothing to worry about. I shall return anon. You wished a word, Yu Yu Hase? You may go. Your Grace.
You must be curious as to the reason for this private audience. The matter I would discuss, however, will soon make apparent the need for discretion. I intend to abdicate the throne and dissolve the monarchy. You have seen for yourself the storm of turmoil that howls through our streets. The government fails in its responsibilities, and my subjects suffer the consequences of our incompetence. But I will see them suffer no longer. The Victory Feast shall provide the stage on which I declare the dissolution of the Sultanate. It is mine intent that the ruling class of our golden city should take its place beside the common man in a fair and equitable republic. No more shall this nation bow to the whims of a privileged few. Yet, that which I propose will entail the tearing up of this city's very foundations. And even Roban, with all his strength and influence, will be hard-pressed to keep his footing on such treacherous ground. Thus would I ask you to lend him a steadying hand. You who have endured the wrath of innumerable foes are the one hero in whom I can place my trust. Will you do this thing for me? I am truly grateful. More grateful than I can well express. Much of my dread for the coming days has been quieted. Grace! Her Grace, the Sultana, is dead. your denials I see no other suspects and the room has but the one entrance I hereby accuse you of a regicide men arrest this viper Sir, barring a few exceptions, we have detained all those with allegiance to the Scions. The Rising Stones is also under our control.
And what do you hope to achieve with this mutiny? Why, that which we have striven for all along, Commander. The salvation of Eorzea. Knights from the homeland. This cannot bode well. Lord Commander, we have received an urgent message from the Holy See. I am grieved to report that your serpentine foes have resumed their assault. Needless to say, your presence is urgently required. These knights have come to bear you swiftly home to Ishgard. A surprise attack. We've had no such word from our men, and the timing is most fortuitous to catch us away from the city. Most fortuitous, indeed. Lord Commander, we must away! You have been a most gracious host. I hope that I might one day return the favor. Come, Lucia. is going on in there. Ah, the ever-dutiful brass blades. I must apologize, but my dance guard is rather full. Another time, perhaps? Thancred, of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. You stand accused of committing acts of espionage in service to the Galian Empire. Espionage? What in the seven hells are you talking about? Ah, if you're referring to that business with the Ultima weapon, then you must understand. I, I wasn't myself. Under interrogation. An Imperial prisoner revealed your involvement in numerous dealings with the enemy. We've also been investigating reports that you are a practitioner of forbidden arts. You best come along with us. You invite me to your party and now you want me to leave? I do so detest receiving mixed signals. Come then. I believe I've lost my appetite for this farce of a celebration. Too far, Lord Adelage. By what right do you march armed soldiers into a royal banquet and eject state visitors without her grace's consent? You treat the brass blades as your personal army and show contempt for the throne with your every act. Leave us now. Is that an order, General? Mayhap you have mistaken me for one of your flames! You will find I am not so slavishly obedient! <laughs> and you lecture me on personal armies! 
As for your outrageous claim that I have shown contempt for the throne, let all here observe that it was not I who feasted while an assassin removed its occupant. I expect this is your idea of defending the nation, is it? This and diluting our forces through these distractions in Cartano and Curthus. I do begin to see how the ranks of the immortal flames came to be riddled with Garlean sympathizers. You are plainly unfit for command. Wait. Wait, goddamn you. Your words make no sense. What assassin? <gasps> you mean to say you don't know? We caught the vaunted champion of the Scions in Her Grace's private chambers, not moments after the deed was done. No! No, this cannot be! Save your breath! You will need it to plead your case. You and your entire order are to be tried for this atrocity. in the prisoner This woman stands accused of poisoning her royal majesty Nanamu Unamo and is suspected accessories to the crime all members of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn will be detained for questioning. This is madness! What a pity. Who'd have thought your tale would end like this? Should you demand further proof, a vial with traces of the substance used to poison her grace was found upon the assassin's person. How very convenient. You would speak of convenience? Who persuaded Her Grace to host this celebration? A diversion which presented you and your confederates ample opportunity to commit the crime, and a crowd within which to fade from view. A more convenient occasion I could scarcely imagine. How dare you, after all we have done for Uldar! Hold your tongue, witch! I'll not be ensorcelled! I know all about the dark gift that you and your disciples wield. Oh yes, I've observed how you worked upon the minds of the Alliance leaders, bending them to your will. And what of your cordial relationship with Sir Emmerich? For years, Ishgard abjured all contact with the outside world, and now the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights treats you with the familiarity of a childhood friend. I'll tell you what I think. I think this desperate defense of Ishgard was but a ruse to deceive us into dividing our forces. Your next move will be to charm your Curthen allies into invading our lands. Now that is truly ridiculous. How do you even think of this stuff? She... she cannot be dead. Stand aside, Ilbert. I want to see the Sultana. Spare yourself the pain, brother. I saw her with my own eyes. For a mercy, the poison took her swiftly. Her handmaiden can attest to that. This cannot be. Nanamo. Nanamo. No! Play 
plainly the royalists can no longer be relied upon to keep our nation safe. And so it falls to the monetarists of the Syndicate to govern Uldar. But should you wish to help us, General, we would be more than happy to entrust the task of planning Her Grace's funeral to you. It seems only right that you should bury your precious Sultana, and we will be glad to be rid of that burden. I'll bet you will. You more than any man. Whatever do you mean? I mean you had her killed, you black-hearted bastard! <laughs> what rot! <laughs> Though I did have sufficient motive, tis true. That young lady caused me no end of grief. She always was a most unwilling puppet. I dare say her grace was grateful that someone thought to cut her strings. You would mock her. Then mock her from hell! What? Have you lost your mind, General? It is forbidden to draw steel in the royal chambers, much less slaughter our fellow Syndicate members. <gasps> You're one of them! You've been in league with the Scions all along! You! Your next, you scheming bastard! Admiral, we must leave. Ah. How unlike you, old friend. I did not expect to take your arm so easily. Take the Scions into custody. They have conspired to commit regicide. And arrest this traitor as well. Ilbert, I hope you choke on their coin. It's better than the dirt I've supped on these long years. We can't all abandon Alamigo and become great war heroes as you have. You are not the man you once were, Roban. Since that girl strapped the yoke around your neck, you've become docile. She took the mad bull and cut off his balls, and a bull that cannot rot is fit for naught but slaughter. Shall I tell you who really killed your precious Sultana? was me. Thank <laughs> you. 
I never doubted you, not for a moment. But there is more to this than I yet understand. Flee this place. Clear your names. Find out who is behind this plot. It is the only way. Now go! There you are. Thancred! Where have you been? Avoiding the fumbling advances of some very persistent admirers. When I realized the celebrations had turned sour, it seemed prudent to slip away and take stock of the situation. It would appear that much of the city is already under tight guard. It occurs to me that expanding the Brass Blade's authority may not have been such a wonderful idea after all. The success of this plan was contingent upon those thugs having the run of the place. Just how long has this scheme been in motion? The careful preparations, the maneuvering of forces. I am inclined to agree with the General's insistence that a deeper plot exists here. So... Would I be right in thinking we now have an excuse to pummel as many brass blades as we like? Unless you plan on pummeling them all, I'm not sure that will greatly aid our cause. The Sultana's assassination was but one part of the scheme. We too were its targets. And though we did not share Pornonimo's fate, we are yet hobbled by the charges laid at our door. Where now might we seek refuge? Where indeed, we may safely assume that our foe has thought to have the Rising Stones watched. Forgive me for stating the obvious, but our choice of destination will matter little if we cannot secure an escape route out of Ulda. Happily, I believe I can provide one. Papashan once told me about the passages hidden in the walls of the palace. If I recall correctly, the fireplace in Anima's chambers conceals the entrance to a tunnel. It should lead outside the city and allow us to avoid any messy confrontations. If you go on ahead, I'll handle this lot. By yourself? Huh, I suppose I shall just have to join you. Crystal Braves too, huh? Now this should be interesting. Ida! Papalimo! We will hold our pursuers here. Hurry, now. Find this tunnel of Thancreds. Minfilia, we cannot linger.
man, look what you've done. Ida, are you all right? There are just too many of them. I'm fine. I could do this all day. How about you? Nearing the end of my tether. We're the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, the ones who stand between this realm and the evil that's trying to destroy it. And if you think we'll leave the stewardship of Eorzea to the likes of your masters, then you're solely mistaken. Sorry I dragged you into this, Popolimo. <laughs> Tis hardly the first time, and I'll be damned if it will be the last. I was hoping you'd say that. I never knew such a watercourse existed beneath Uldar. The architecture is of the Sildene style, if I'm not mistaken. The ancients plainly foresaw the need for a ready means of escape. This way! Well, that didn't take long. It seems these tunnels were not as secret as I'd hoped. You two, go on ahead. Thancred and I will deal with this. Wha what do you mean to do? Only that which is required to ensure that the dawn's light survive to brighten the morrow. Fear not, Antecedent. You haven't seen the last of these fair features. My friends... Leave us! What is the plan, milady? Shall I take the dozen on the left and you the dozen on the right? The odds are not exactly stacked in our favor. Numbers will count for little when I bring the tunnel down upon their heads. Though I cannot say I relish the thought of being entombed with you for all eternity. You wound me. I will have you know that many a maid would kill for the chance to spend forever at my side. Now, may I have the last dance?
This is going splendidly. Now would be a good time, milady. Tis done. Forgive me, Mitra. Farewell, Lucilia. Hydaelyn? She... she speaks to me. No! I must remain behind, but you cannot stay with me. Please, you must go on. You are the warrior of light. You are hope for the Scions and for all the realm. As long as your flame continues to burn, the light of the dawn may ever be relit. You must escape and save Eorzea from those who would plunge it into darkness. Tis the only way. I am glad to see you safe, my friend. What of the others? Damn that man! Taleji played me for a fool! I thought the Crystal Brave's mine till the very moment I felt the blade at my back. There will be ample time for soul searching later. For now, we must put some moms between us and Ulda. Well, would you look who it is? Need a ride? I doubt it'll be half as exciting as the last trip we took. Not if I have anything to say about it anyway. Let's not dawdle, eh? All aboard!
I was stocking up on supplies over in Vespa Bay, you see, when your sister come up and begged a favor. Said her brother was having some trouble down in Uldar and likely needed a helping hand getting away. But thinking them ruins would make a fine hiding place, I decided to try there first. And lo and behold, there you were. Aye, and judging by them soldiers as were pouring out of the city, I arrived not a moment too soon. Ha! <laughs> Must have been fate that we happened to find you there, though, eh? I had thought to look out for Alize, but would appear she was the one watching over me. I've made such a mess of things. Who might you be, young sir? Pippin Taropin, Vice Marshal of the Immortal Flames. I had been on the Alamegan front these past few moons, but an urgent communication called me back to Uldar. Scarce had my boots touched the cobbles, though, when the streets erupted with cries of assassination. I immediately went in search of answers, and came across Master Alfino here. Needless to say, I did not think his imprisonment justified. The blame plainly lies with the Monetarists. Their greed and corruption are well known to me, but for them to take advantage of the situation with such alacrity... Was that Pippin, you said? Ain't that the name of General Aldin's lad? Yes, I am his son. Adopted, of course. It was only as we were leaving Uldar that I learned of father's fate. Once I have seen you a safe distance away, I mean to return to the city and extricate him from this madness. Then you needn't travel no further than Blackbrush. Our fugitives have a friend waiting for them there. I dreamed of bringing about Eorzea's salvation, but in the end... ...'twas I who needed saving. <laughs> Hold up. Alright. That's a long ass cutscene. Also, I'm gonna keep going until like we've seen everything, so this might be a longer episode than usual. But actually, this already is a longer you know what I mean, whatever. And um, soldiers are keep certain for a while yet. Reckon we'll take the carriage back to back towards Old Dahl and get the lay of the land. Maybe provide a distraction if need be. Also there's a cat on my lap again, so you know cat noises. You three wait here. Help will be along shortly. Stay strong, friends. The real fights, the real fights to come. All right, let's go. Most unassuming folk can prove to be our greatest allies. That fellow was but a passing merchant, yet he lent us aid without a moment's hesitation, or any hint of concern for his own safety. Though I can well imagine how a man could feel inspired to risk it all in your presence. Father spoke, uh, uh, father spoke often of you, Lin, and long have I looked forward to our first meeting. Needless to say, this is not at all how I envisioned it. Master Alfino, you must not give in to despair. That would only play into our enemy's hands. So long as you and Lin are free, we may still set things right. Forgive me, Master... Uh, forgive me, Mar Marshal Turpin, but I... Elfino, my boy, sorry to keep you waiting, I have no idea who this is. Ah, it's Sid. <laughs> actually used, like, an, a slightly accurate voice. Sid, what are you doing here? 
Pulling you out of the fire as usual. Your merchant friend told me everything. Truly? Then he is no merchant but an angel in peddler's clothing. But tell us, how do you intend to bear our friends to safety? I hit the Enterprise but a short distance away. All I need is a destination. We must find a place beyond the reach of both the Monotherists and the Crystal Braves. Curses, uh, curses. Ishgard will not suffer the intrusion of foreign forces in their territory. That settles it. With me, everyone. Not I, I fear. I must remain here. I dare not abandon Ulda to the Monotherists and their cronies. It may be certain that they will seek to defame you, both here and in the other city-states, but know that I shall do my utmost to thwart their every effort. Frankly, I do not expect it to be much of a challenge. The small folk will not turn so easily on Warrior of Light and her allies, no matter what the monetarists claim. Mushroom Terrapin, I... I know not what to say. Huh, now that... now that father would, would labor... Uh, would labor to believe. There we go. <laughs> Jesus. But enough talk. You must go, Master Alfino. Your airship awaits. Run, Sid. Run. Is there another cutscene? Yeah. Up, up. There's no rest for the righteous. Breaks her neck trying to turn around. Jesus Christ. It breaks her back, really. Like, look at that. Jesus. We should make for Count Dragonhead and speak with Lord Horsefond. Mayhap, mayhap he will know what to do. Nod. Hey, I have my bow back. Curse the Central Highlands. The fact that this thing can fly is quite perplexing. <laughs> but at the same time, I guess you could say about literally everything in this game. <laughs> Master Elfina told me of your uh, told me of your tale. It warms my heart that you should turn to me before all others, and I shall endeavor to deserve your trust. The last situation here has grown more complicated in your absence. It would be best if I explain in full. Hello. I think this is voiced. There has been word from the capital. Ishgard has weathered another assault. And tis said several wyverns broke through into the city proper. The Temple Knights succeeded in slaying the beasts, but the intrusion prompted orders to further strengthen the guard and to place the city under a perpetual state of alert. How keenly we feel the loss of our wards at the Gates of Judgment. Yet we must not bemoan our misfortune. Sir Emmerich is safely returned from Uldar, and once more leads the defense of Ishgard. As for the matter of your asylum, I am afraid no progress will be made until the threat to our nation is diminished. But do not despair. You are not without allies. You are more than welcome to shelter here for as long as you wish. Pray, think of it as a new headquarters of sorts, the falling snows, or some such. All frivolity aside, any who come here in search of you 
will receive no aid from House Fortong. For once, the Iscardian reputation for inhospitality shall work in our favor. Agents of Uldar will find their every inquiry dismissed and their every request for entry rebuffed until such time as their masters have acknowledged your innocence. You once fought to preserve the honor of my dear friend. Tis a blessing that I may now repay that debt in kind. But let us dwell no more on this. Pray, join the rest of your companions. Tis bitterly cold this day. I suspect there are those who might welcome the warmth your presence brings. Bruh. <laughs> okay, there's even more cutscenes apparently. Uh, well, I knew there were more cutscenes, but the fact that it told me the same, like, so many cutscenes happening again in, like, this? That seems suspicious to me, because I don't remember there being that much. Alfino, you know, Lin, is it really you? I'm so happy that, that you are... Sniffle sob. I tried contacting Minfiri and the others, but no one would respond. And then Crystal Braves, our own people, turned on us in the marketplace. Flamine told me to run, and so I did. I ran and I ran until my lungs burned and my feet ached, but I lost my way and then. Unfortunately, I had observed. Uh, that's the wrong voice. Fortunately, I had observed some of the Braves behaving suspiciously beforehand. There she is. Hmm? Ah, yes, my mask. Uh, it was lost in the struggle. Pretty, isn't she? Anyway, after Yugiri found me, we traveled to Vesper Bay and met up with Arianje. When we told him what had happened, he used his magics to weave a glamour around the waking sands. From the outside, our old headquarters now looks like an abandoned storehouse. The transformation didn't take long either. Apparently, Arianje started making, making preparations after the Imperial attack, just in case the Empire ever chose to pay us another visit. Good thinking, eh? Sorry, where was I? Oh, oh yes, so we waited there at the Waking Sands, hoping others would come, but no one else did. My people are searching for the other Scions as, even as we speak, but we have met with no success as yet. I had hoped that you might be able to suggest further places to look. Ah, but you should know. The Rising Stones did not share the Waking Sands' good fortune. Only Crystal Braves await you there. Be it as it may, we may have uh, we we, ha we yet have cause to hope, do we not? If the two of you escaped, it is not impossible that the others could have done so as well. You may have been forsaken by men and women, believed true, but uh, believed true. But rest assured that the people of Doma yet stand with you. We welcome this opportunity to repay our debts, and shall continue our efforts to locate the others and see the Scions restored to their rightful place of honor. I think this will be voiced. Tis all my doing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I believed myself the only one who truly understood Eorzea's woes. And look what that arrogance has wrought. I gave commands, influenced governments with my certainty. I treated the Crystal Braves and even the Scions themselves as pawns in my great scheme to save the realm. But in my headlong rush into imagined glory, I paid no heed to the ground upon which I trod. The salvation of Eorzea. What was it that I hoped to achieve? Did I believe that I could rid the realm of every danger and difficulty? That I could defeat the Empire and the Asians, And find homes for every refugee? Oh, yes. I was so very clever. Become a guardian of Eorzea, I implored, and sat back to watch my perfect army cleanse the land of chaos. It was all but a means to feed my own vanity. 
Only when all is lost do I finally realize the truth. Oh, Alfino. So, Master Alfino, are you content to remain a broken blade? Is there no flame hot enough to reforge you? What of the fine companions who yet stand at your side? I dare say the fires of their determination will soon have you slicing the air again with your customary wit. I hardly deserve such friendship. And besides, where are we to go? No, if I may. Should this place not serve our purpose, then then we shall go to Ishgard. Minfilia told me many times, as long as we stand fast against despair, the beacon of hope will never be lost to sight. Be it in the snow or in the clouds. We few will see that the dawn's light shines again. You are right, Totoro. Thank you. And thank you for your kind words, Lord Orshfon. Tis true that Eorzea yet has her guardians. The Scions have achieved much, and it would be remiss of me to discard it all in a fit of self-pity. Let us then resume our journey, together, one step at a time. I think these are the credits. Because otherwise I would not be hearing this baller of a song. <laughs> so then we get the credits again, which we have already seen before. And then it goes like the Realm Reborn thing. And I think it even played the same song. But I will skip this. Because <laughs> we've already seen it. This is probably what the game meant with like, set aside sufficient time. has been arranged as you desired, my lord. I think we're going to have some asking dialogue over here. Labrialis is no more. The order was not his, in, his to invoke. His demise was of his own making. Nevertheless, it concerns me. They have extinguished that which should rightly be eternal. Mayhap he was not wholly mistaken. Greater haste may be warranted. We are of one mind. The northern lands, then? The earth is fertile, and the seeds will well sown. By my will, they shall reap salvation unlike any the world has known. 
by his will. By his will. I have answered thy summons, emissary. Speak and make thine intent known. I would speak of fate, Archon. Yours, mine, the fate of this very star. Sanctuary lieth beyond. Laughs in Midgard's armor. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's so good. Delusion. Despair. Death. Thou shalt find naught else here. To preserve the dawn's light, the heroes journeyed north. Their hearts filled with hope and eyes fixed heavensward. Ah! I get goosebumps from this, but the thing is, the thing that's going to give me even more goosebumps is coming up in a moment. This, my friends, is the end of A Realm Reborn. You get the achievement, my left arm, and you get Bearer of the Torch. Now, before we continue, or before I end it off, actually, because, you know, it's a freaking long episode. Um, there's one final thing we need to do. And that is, I'm gonna go to the title screen. We're gonna ignore this. And we're gonna go look at the Heavensward demo and title. Let's fucking go.
Ooh. Oh, oh my god. Okay. That was oh. Mm. Anyway. Um if you guys aren't hyped, I sure as hell am. Um Yeah. Like these introduction videos are so freaking good. Every single freaking time. The cinematics are so unrealistically good. But the Heaven Sword one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, together with the Shadowbringers one. Actually, I like all of them, but like, Heaven's Word hits differently for me. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode of just us playing Final Fantasy XIV. And next episode, we are going to go and begin the critical, critically acclaimed expansion, Heaven's Word. Goodbye. <laughs>